Hello friends, this video on Organisms and Population Part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have been talking about population, it is important to introduce population density. That is how many organisms per unit area or per unit volume is present because many a times it happens that defining population becomes a very tedious task because measurement of population is not very easy so if i tell you how many bacteria what is the population of bacteria in the culture dish so it is very difficult to count the number of bacteria so how we measure population is with population density that is we calculate the number of bacteria in a very small area and then we say that okay these many bacteria per unit area is the population density so that we get an idea about the total population of that particular dish right because as i said bacteria they multiply very fast so it is not possible for us to count the numbers always because you know every second there will be thousands of bacteria new bacteria formed so that is why what is being done is we calculate the total number of bacteria for a small area and then we define the number of bacteria per unit area and then since we know the total area of that culture dish so we can calculate the total population so this is one alternative. Another alternative is to express population density in percentage volume as well. So depending upon where you want to know the population, you can use population density. So now the question is, how do we know if the population is increasing or decreasing? What are those factors which will tell us what is happening to the population, whether it is decreasing or it is increasing? So that is where we talk about population growth. So when I say that population is increasing, I mean that as time passes by, the number of individuals are increasing in the population. Similarly, when I say that the population is decreasing, I mean that the number of individuals are reducing with time. Now, whenever we talk about an increase or decrease in population, there are a couple of factors which play a very critical role. So those critical factors are natality. What is natality? Natality is nothing but it is the birth rate. That is the number of individuals which are being born. Because any new individual born is going to add to the population. So this is going to increase the population. Similarly, you have mortality. That is which is nothing but the death rate. Now the number of individuals which die, that would reduce the population. So this is going to decrease the population immigration what is immigration that is a group of individuals entering a particular area from outside now whenever you have individuals entering a particular area what would happen so these are the individuals which enter the area so the population would increase similarly there might be emigration and in emigration individuals leave this area and they go to some other place so obviously when somebody is leaving the area, what would happen? The population would reduce. So these are the four important factors which decide how the population would change, whether the population would increase or the population would decrease. So for example, let's say that if in a particular area, number of births that happened is greater than the number of deaths. So let us now talk about each of these terms in more detail. So we start with natality so natality is the number of births during a given period in the population so how many newborns are being produced in a given time period that is termed as natality so with more births happening what would happen the size of the population would increase when we talk about mortality it is just the opposite of natality it talks about the number of deaths during a given period. Now, when more deaths are happening, we are losing more organisms. So, obviously, the population is going to reduce. The third factor that is immigration, which is the number of organisms that enter into the habitat from elsewhere during a specific time period. So, here you can see these are the immigrants. So these birds which are entering this area, these are the immigrants. So maybe they are coming from a place where the weather is not suitable and therefore just for those 
uh, period those months of unfavorable weather they might stay here so what will happen to the population of this area it would increase because earlier there were just five birds now so many birds are also entering here so the population would increase due to immigration i for in so immigration means birds coming in similarly emigration emigration would mean birds going out so maybe from this area again during favorable conditions these birds might go back so when these birds are leaving this area so what will happen to the population of this area the population would decrease so concede so we can say that number of organisms that left the habitat and moved elsewhere during a time period that is called emigration so considering all these four important factors how can we calculate population density so we normally denote population density by n and we are considering natality mortality immigration and emigration so considering them all we can say that the population density at any time say t plus 1 would be equal to the population density at time t so an initial time t and again we are now calculating the population density after say one year so this would be equal to the popul initial population density plus the new births that happened plus the new immigrants that came to that area so all these things will add on to the population but there would have also been some deaths so minus the death deaths that had happened in the last one year and minus the emigration that had happened so this equation would give us the population density at a specific time period so here i denotes the immigrants the number of immigrants e denotes the number of emigrants d denotes the deaths that had happened and b denotes the births that had happened so considering all these factors we can very easily calculate the population density at a given time period if we know the initial population density for that area thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.